Hi, Danielle. Hi, Casey. Today was a tough day for you. It was. I'm not going to lie. You know. We woke up to some pretty upsetting images. Shocking images. And it was weird shocking because images. I thought, you know, like, we're in a pandemic. It's tough. What more? What more could happen? What more could befall? Right. One. One person. Wonderful, gorgeous Thank human. Thank you, Casey. One struggling mother. <laughs> and the. The thing about it that might be most upsetting is that we've been here before. We have. And I almost, I was like, it's a groundhog day type of thing to like think you're past something and realize you're right back where you started. Exactly. And and also to kind of think to yourself like, wow, I guess lightning can really strike twice. And then you really start to go, is this what I look like? <laughs> right. And I, I urge you not to go there because there's just something. And, and look. The podcast company that we work for Earwolf. is Earwolf. We love being at Earwolf. They have wonderful, wonderful podcasts. So we hope that goes without saying, but we've had to call them out in the past now, for I'm- their incessant, insatiable desire to portray all of the podcast hosts in animated form. Now, we've been here before, Danielle. If, if some new listeners will recall, Unfortunately, without our knowledge, we were drawn initially, and we both looked very unfortunate. No, Casey looked amazing. Don't forget. Did I right off the bat? You looked amazing. No, I needed some tweaks. I needed some tweaks Mm, in the last one. I think they tweaked you, and then your second version because they tweaked me. If everyone remembers, go back to my Instagram. You can go back in history if you need to look. Go back about three or four years at this point, and there was an image of me where my teeth looked like I had (laughs) done a buttload of meth. And hadn't brushed in ages. My face looked insane. I looked horrible. You had bucked teeth. And they were blackened in different... Black teeth. Black teeth, which I don't. My parents (laughs) spent a lot on my orthodontry. And your hair was unspeakable. And, and it it eyes, was not you. No. You're a gorgeous person, Dan. It was like not face, you. I, look, I know what I look like. I understand my highs, my lows, my goods, my bads. And I, I'm comfortable with my skin. Right. You were at a place of of great acceptance, yeah, positive acceptance. Great acceptance. And you're very body positive. Yeah. And yet when that image hit and was published, we were horrified. Horrified. horrified because And then we'd asked for a redo and you got one. Was it all still perfect? No. Did I still have blackened teeth? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Despite many rounds of notes. And, and Deanna Chang, dear friend, also was not given a fair, the greatest a fair shake. Tribute. No. Right. Casey, you seem so, to have and you well, look, I don't want to, you know, you look great. it's, it's all, you so, know, in the eye okay, of the beholder. We finally got to a good place after a few re- yep. reduxes. But here we are again. Here we are again. I wake and up And the morning. following comes out on Instagram on Earwolf's page. Now it's the Earwolf. 10th anniversary of Earwolf. So they say, celebrating 10 years of Earwolf, Yellowheart. Thanks to every person in parentheses and character who made it all possible. And indeed, they made you look like a character, Danielle. And I'm, yes. we've now brought on our producer, Dana. And I'm going to go ahead and just show her the slide in which Danielle and I are are sharing, you know, with a lot of wonderful comedians. There we are. There's Casey. There's Dana. No, Casey, beautiful. She looks like Betty Boop. Just a gorgeous little, like, full lips. Big, beautiful eyes, a, a, just a tweak of a nose, like just an angel, brows, everything looking gorgeous. I, I'm not unhappy with it. <laughs> and there? With the rendering. Is- Danielle, yeah. when I saw you, <laughs> I screamed. I cried. I couldn't believe it. It's also your placement feels unfair. <laughs> You're sticking out with just a head again. They have blackened, blackened teeth. teeth. <laughs> and I don't understand why. It feels also vaguely anti-Semitic with your nose, a different shade of your body. Different shade. And then I'm going to show you a picture. Deanna Chang showed a a picture of the scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. That's what you look like. Your hair gets more and more upsetting. At the top, they have you with like a very, I think, a generous, nice wave. And as it comes down your head, it becomes straw-like and coarse and... I don't know how to say this. You look like a clown. <laughs> it is so far from what you are. And I can make those jokes and laugh because it's not you. Again, what is it about my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> and 
also Casey pointed out that there's basically no one else in the entire 10 years of Earwolf that has teeth that are showing. And mine are shockingly many. And look at these teeth, Dana, look at these teeth. <laughs> and also the way, again, you're popping up from frame, you know, and now there's other friends right next to us, for instance. Mm -hmm. We've got next to me, old boyfriend of three years, cuddled right up to me, Paul Rust, the incredible, incredible comedian, actor, and all around wonderful human. So that's fun. Right next to Paul is your husband, husband. Matt. Give it up. Cute awesome. rendering, uh, lording above us all in an easy chair is Scott Ackerman, dear friend. We see, uh, you know, Kulap, we see. Kulap V. Lysak, dear friend above us okay. with full. Gorgeous with a full rendering of her t her arm tattoo, which we love. And then you are popping up into frame almost like a mistake. Yes. Almost as if I'm growing out of somebody else. And like you and me, I will say they're not choosing to show our bodies. They're acting like we came last minute. The way, you know, someone would come and crouch at the front of yeah. a photo. Or the way that they would and just like pop up someone in like, oh, they weren't here. So let's just put a, put their image in and hope nobody saw. Yeah. So Dana, our producers is on. Dana speak to this. What, what do you think? Can what? you speak to this? And we, and we know you're not responsible for the key art, but yet, did you approve our photos? And also, well, where are we? I blame Earwolf. I don't even blame this artist. I blame Earwolf because you are all giving a picture because the, the artist has to get the picture. Or is the artist just Googling us? Because I will say they're not representing my bangs. So this, <laughs> I, I feel like I even know the photo they're going off of. Dana, let's turn it over to you. <laughs> To put you so on the glad spot. You're, this is being brought up. Um, <laughs> I have no, I wish I had more of like a backstory for, to tell you about like how this artist retrieved photos. Mm -hmm. I was not told anything. I actually didn't know about the post. I knew like a poster was like going to happen, I think, or like some artwork was going to happen, but um, no photos were uh, given to me to approve. Nor I, us. I, <laughs> I, I saw it in it, almost in the same way that you guys saw it, with the exception of it being before the Instagram post and not the And Instagram. so you didn't stop it is what you're telling me. You saw the, the picture <laughs> and let it move forward to the public is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You had an opportunity to say and something when you see some, something and you didn't. I'm not. going through some other photos and I'm seeing, I think, Barely. a very cute one of, of June and Jason Mansukis. Mm, there are a couple people I will shall not name that may not be as thrilled either. I will be completely honest and say there were some people I didn't know who they were supposed to be. But I do think as an art piece as a whole, it's it is fun and honor. But I am not concerned with the whole. I'm concerned with the individual at this moment. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, unfortunately, so the last one, and I hate to point this out, Danielle, but the last ones were kind of more like, if I recall, like just for our show. So it was able to be tweaked, you know, but this feels very much like a final product. <laughs> like, this is a final product. No... This is out in the world. Right. Like it's up, you know. Um, and I guess amends need to be made and i don't know if who that will come from the higher ups um go on, go I, on will, I will talk to the right people to yeah, see maybe just dig into it what could be done or what what happens <laughs> it doesn't feel like much can be done like but it to be erased yeah i don't i don't know if anything can be really like done now <laughs> but that, mm, for what it's mm. worth i think it's I think it's like kind of it's it's funny, but I think it's like cute. I don't think how? it's like as how? like how <laughs> okay. You don't think it's as bad, Dana? No, I think it's like it's like when you get like it's better than when you get a character done. On when like you get a, a character done, you're paying for that, and you're saying, "Hey, I want this ridiculous <laughs> photo of me playing tennis." Like on a skateboard or okay, whatever. Okay, Danielle, there's something ask. we haven't seen. Danielle, there's something we haven't seen. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't realize when you look at the whole thing that you can see our bodies. We're actually just popping out of that one frame. Okay. I, uh, there is a body for us. So it's like what we saw was us just like popping our heads out. But I will say, your body looks cute. You're in um mm, a kind of aqua onesie. Um. <laughs> And what? I am, I will say I'm in a kind of very fun black, little black dress. 
You're in like a little black classy dress, and I'm in an aqua one. Well, let me show you. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think your outfit is bad. It's. 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 it's hmm. Okay, let me show it. Let me just show it to you guys, and we will put these on our Instagram. See, Danielle, do you see your body? Oh, what am I wearing? It has a cute scalloped neckline. Oh, I am glad I'm to know we are like attention. full bodies. The attention now, to a scalloped what is your husband? Your husband is sitting. Teeth. Your husband is sitting. It's interesting, you know. Hmm. It feels, you know, who feels like drew it was the Where's Waldo draw, you know, author. Yes. Or illustrator. Yeah. Dania, don't say yeah like that's like, yeah. <laughs> Dana. Real company man here. Um, you know, I will feel the first one might have been worse, although I'm actually not sure because when I saw this, I screamed I, alone in my house. It's just insult to injury. The injury had been done and the scar, is, right. the scar tissue is still there, but it doesn't mean it's not... The injury isn't still there. I don't like anyone to touch my C-section scar still. And that's been seven years. And what did your husband say when he saw it? Because we immediately called Deanna Chang on a three-way call. My husband (laughs) was like, this doesn't look like you. I said, thank you. That's why I married you. And then he said, (laughs) what I'm also not seeing are many other people's noses different colors. I'm seeing a couple different colored noses. But I'm sure they're like a character. I mean, like, you know, like some right. people play characters on their podcast and I get it, but this is me. This is my life. I think it's just like Muppet vibes. Does that make sense? Like everyone. No. I'm not saying Casey does not look like a Muppet. Casey does not look like a Muppet. I feel I look great. <laughs> You just wrote me. Why are my teeth always that of a meth head? <laughs> oh my god! All right. Well, thank you, we Dana. Just wanted it, to it, hurt. If and anything, we've learned you co-sign that. Yes, and that you said you saw it, you could see something and say something and did nothing, and that is comforting to know from our producer. Thank you, Dana, <laughs> for always looking out. Yeah. Um, you know, towards Danielle. Me. All I can say is I'm sorry. You're gorgeous. Thank you, Casey. And look, again, I feel like I know what I look like. And I've accepted yeah. my, I take the good, I take the bad. You take them you both. You take it all. And there you have, have this terrible meth head life. picture. Of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just surprising. It is also like a Where's Waldo when you try to find you. It's like, oh. I pop out. You're never going to find. Where's Schneider? You're not going to find her unless you look for the teeth. The only person with fucked up teeth. <sighs> mm, it wasn't what we wanted to wake up no, to be on top not, of everything. Not what I wanted on this, especially not on a show day. Not on a show day of all days when we have a great show and an amazing guest. We really do beautiful transition, Casey. Thank you. We have a guest that we've been following on Instagram. Uh, she has an incredible, incredible page where she posts videos, kind of recaps of shows. She's been doing Roni and Beverly Hills, and now she's covering Potomac. And she's funny. She's insightful. She's uh, gorgeous, first of all. And I'm transfixed by her beauty. When I watch the videos, she's got housewives following her, commenting along. It's really, really fun. And everything she says just makes me laugh. Or I hadn't thought of that. And we're honored to have her. So uh, shall we bring her right out, Danielle? Please do. I'm excited for this one. Please welcome Sasha Morfa. Hi, Sasha. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. We're so excited to have you. I feel like you've been in my head the last few days because I've been watching your amazing Instagram and sort of like YouTube link of your breakdowns, which are extremely well-produced, professional, and even have a theme song. (laughs) That doesn't seem like it was just like stolen from the internet like Casey and I did. And so... (laughs) Yeah, Muzak, just mix of instruments that we found in two seconds. (laughs) Um, Sasha, we are so happy to have you here. You're so funny. You're covering the same world we are. And we would say we're in competition with you, but you've already won. (laughs) So we're so, so happy to have you here. We need all of your thoughts. We just want to like launch in in a more global bird's eye view. How did you come to all of this? Tell everyone exactly what you do and, and just, just take us, take us on a deep dive of you. And before, real quick, and also that you're a Bravo historian is what you are. Yeah. are technically. Am I? Am I? I believe you are. You're a okay. historian. I will, I will, I will, I will take that. I will accept you're that You're like title. the Ron Cherno who did uh, Hamilton, I believe. You're <laughs> okay. 
That's who you are. One, uh, much like Wendy, who we'll discuss later, our newest Potomac housewife, a professor. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Class okay. in session. Yes. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about you and how you came to this important work. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I started out just watching Atlanta for the longest time. That's the only one I watched for years and years and years. My mom and I used to watch it together every Sunday. I heard about all the other franchises, but I mean, I'm like, no representation, nothing for me to see over there on all those other cities. You know what I mean? What do you mean? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Whatever are you speaking of? Right, right, right. What? What do you think? There's no, there's no black people. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. so yeah, so I only watched Atlanta for the longest. And actually, I was driving on a long drive to an audition. So I'm an actor. So I was living in Atlanta, driving to uh, New Orleans for an audition. You drove to New Orleans for an audition? Yes! I hope you fucking got that role. I didn't get it. Fuck them. But I got them down and and find them and kill them. (laughs) And now, if that ever happened again, this this is like four or five years ago. You know, a lot can change in four or five years ago. You can go from thirsty to done had enough. So at that point, I was very thirsty for a job. So I went to the audition. It was like an eight-hour drive. And I was just going through podcasts and I found your guys' podcast. Yeah. And you and I listened to it. And you guys were talking about Roni. And I'm like, what, what are they talking about? And I'm cracking up laughing. And I had never seen Roni or Beverly Hills, but it was hilarious. And that's actually when I started watching the other franchises. Oh, we were a like, gateway for you. Yes, you were. To the white women oh, of were. Bravo. To the white women of Bravo. <laughs> I've never been more proud. I've never been more disgusted. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm disgusted. Is That's how I really feel. Okay, so you didn't get that part, but you did perhaps kind of, you know, you got into some other cities, although we've always said, we think Roni and Atlanta are the best. Oh, absolutely. I mean, but I think Potomac, there's no contact. Now Potomac. Potomac, Potomac, Potomac Roni. Atlanta, Potomac, Roni. Those wow. are Wow. Okay, you're yes, putting Potomac at two. Okay. And then can you go ahead and just rank the others or are those what you're watching just while we're here? Uh, Well, I watch everything, but after that, I mean, this is controversial, but I like OC. What? Because I think that those okay, women Sasha. are like okay. <laughs> white white lady crazy. Like right. Shannon Bador. It's not my fucking play, you bitch. Right. Like I cannot get that There's out of There's a my place head. for that to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like those are like our Trumpers, you know? And I guess yes, it's, it's like, like watching them be a special kind of crazy does have its joys. Watching it over OC, there. Over there. Yeah, watching OC is like over going there. to the zoo. You know, do exactly. you want to meet these animals Never. in, you know, it, on a daily farm. basis in front of you? No. But do you want to Never watch them at a safe distance so, so they can't maul you or hurt anybody? Yes. I agree. Exactly. I agree. Now, Shannon Bedore has been struck COVID. with COVID, as has her whole family, after not wearing a mask and being, you know, living in Orange County, which is the most anti-mask county in the country. Anyway, yes. continue on, Sasha. And it makes me feel better about myself to see these white women over here just like completely unhinged and just like losing their shit. I'm like, yeah, that's what you get over there not wearing your fucking mask. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. We will be dragged to that. Okay. Um, Sasha, and where do you where do you find like where's your Dallas? Where's your I'm not a big Dallas fan, especially after especially after last season with all of those comments that, you know, Leanne Leanne was making, I wasn't out. That left a really bad taste in my mouth. So I'm not a big Dallas fan. I dibble in it. Dibble dabble. Definitely watch Jersey. I love. Literally uh, forgot about Jersey when I was just asking you. Okay. That's where I'm at. Margaret. Marge. Marge Sr. Love the, both of them. I'm really into Jackie. I like Jackie a lot. Um, and then Beverly Hills, Last season, Beverly Hills lost me with the puppy gate. I was like, I'm done with Beverly Hills. I'm done with Vanderpump. She's a manipulator. She's an instigator. She's a sniper from the side, as EJ would say. But this season, she kind of, you know, they kind of brought me back in with the whole Denise Richards and all of that. But it's starting to, again, Beverly Hills has a way of picking one storyline and basing the whole season around it. And then we finally get to the bottom of it. It's so anticlimactic. It's like, I don't waste a whole season just to find out if Denise hooked yes. up with Brandy like I even care. I like, wrote the I circle does not hold here. You've got me on the hook. And I invested again, despite my, it's like when you go back out with a boyfriend, you're like, I know this isn't going to be anything, but maybe this time, you know, and, right. and I'm worried. We, I, I'm, I'm worried, but we'll, we'll get to Beverly Hills. Yeah. Okay, and so, uh, okay, well, quickly, let's touch on Atlanta since it's your favorite and we're not covering Atlanta right now. We, you know, Portia and Sonia are, are my favorite housewives and Kenya. Now, I'm a Kenya, not a Kenya apologist. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I no? see you smiling yeah, awkwardly. 
I can't do Kenya. Okay. No? I can't. No, I yeah. can't. I feel like, like she has no heart. Like, her soul is dark. I felt a little bit of empathy for her this season with the whole Mark situation. I think she's a great villain. Right. But I just personally don't like her. I love Nini. I stand Nini for life. A lot of people don't like Oh, Nini. I love Nini. I love Nini. People think, oh, Nini, you know, she needs to get off the show. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't want to be better. She is the show. Better. Thank Why you. Why would she get off something that she is? Okay. Okay. Let me just say a word about Nini because I do love Nini. I love her in my heart and my soul. I want what's best for her in this world. But I do think when she shuts everybody down, it makes it hard and, 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 and is not friends with anybody on the show and has no allies on the show of her own making that it is hard to have her on the show because that's what the show becomes about. So I mm-hmm. love Nini when Nini's at her best, but when Nini's at her worst, I find the show uh, less fun. I can get behind I that. I can hear that. Yeah. I can yeah. hear so it. Just, yeah. As again, you were I saying love- it, it kind of reminded me a bit of Denise. Not that the, I mean, these are two incredibly different people, but in terms of there's something you want to get at, but it's not being gotten at. It's like, but mm-hmm. then she walks away and that kind of thing. As Lisa Rinna said, this is your, or was it Lisa or was it Teddy? No, Teddy was like, this is your job to stay here and actually tell us what's going on with your family. Like, that mm-hmm. said, I'm mm-hmm. Nini for life. She, one second of her screen time wise is funnier than uh, 27 million episodes of a, you know, Absolutely. Candy or a yeah, for, to me. Exactly. And for me, that's a, one of the, like, at the top of the list when I think of why I like a housewife, for me, it's comedy. Like, oh. she is. Well, Portia is the funniest hilarious. woman on television. Right, but Nini right. is hilarious. <laughs> Nini's so funny. And Phaedra. Oh, she, I miss Phaedra every day. Fay Fay. She's so funny. She made some mistakes, you know, and who amongst? I know. Big mistakes. Who I mean, amongst? I love her. Believe me, I would accept her back with open, loving arms and a procession of a band at you like know, a, one of those funerals she plans. I would be happy <laughs> to. I don't miss Sheree. I do. Every I do. Day. I do miss Sheree. Especially now that her joggers are coming out, supposedly. (laughs) We, I need her back. She always has at least one moment every season that, Mm. like, could be on a t-shirt. Exactly. And she makes money off those t-shirts at your local Nordstrom. I just got a um, face mask that is in the mail for me that says, who gonna check me, boo? Where'd you get that? Did she sell that or did we sell that? (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we're always like taking their catchphrases and selling them with a cuter version of what they would make. And then (laughs) they don't even know us. Um, speaking of not knowing us, Danielle, maybe we'll touch on this very briefly. Yes. No, this was Sasha, a I don't know thing. if you're aware of this and I'm both humbled by it and I'm horrified by it, but I'm also happy about it, which is that Ramona Singer was apparently on Watch What Happens Live with Brad Gorski, who I, mm-hmm. Gorski, mm-hmm. Sure. I love dearly despite my fluff, flub of his name, but I love him. And he is married to Gary Janetti, who we've had on the show. And apparently Andy had them play a game where Brad would hold up, I guess, was it? I didn't see it, Danielle. Photos? I think they showed photos of different people with Ramona, with them at the time, and asking her, like, who is this who person? Is this like, this is a person who you're, like, laughing with in the picture, talking with in the picture, having a real co- having a real conversation with this person. It seems to be intimate. Who is this person? And now I was one of those people. So it is at the same time, it's like, I don't expect anyone to recognize me. So I'm just happy to be included in the conversation, you know, and, and, and she did not remember me or, or, no, or said, recognize me, Sasha. You, <laughs> what did she, she say? Said, she said something to the fact of like, I don't know. I don't know. How, how am I supposed to know anything about these people? Brad <laughs> knew who you were. And he was like, I love Casey. But that Ramona is was like, I don't know, thrilling. you know, no apologies. She didn't never apologize with Ramona. She just blamed Andy and I think blamed Casey. And I did not, appreciate you know, I heard Andy stuck up for me and said, like, you, you know, I was a guest on the show with her. But at the same time, you know, and, you know, Dolores <laughs> and I are still DMing each other from our time on the show together. So you can make a connection on that show. And Ramona and I didn't quite take it there. Take it that far. But I'll just say, you know, I, honestly, what I got out of that is the fact that Brad likes me. And that means so much more to me than Ramona. Ramona, I bet she has trouble recognizing Avery in the morning. I mean, she's so involved <laughs> with herself. I know. Sorry to do that sidebar, Sasha, but it was. But she did. She did recognize Jax Taylor because they showed a picture of her with Jax and she knew who that was. Okay. Well, because okay. he's a man and she wants to jump on his dick. Anything well, with a dick, Ramona has like an encyclopedic memory. Of. She's like, I met this person once. I made out with him. I grabbed him. This, you know, like anyone that she wants to fuck, like 
totally in there. Steel trap. Now, yep, Sasha, I want to talk to you about Vanderpump Rules because you cover Vanderpump Rules big time. And I've watched mm-hmm. some of your breakdowns. What are you, where are you with the show? Ugh. I mean, I would like to see Sheena reign. That would be the only reason why I would like for it to come back because they did her dirty this past season. And this could be her time to redeem herself and have her moment. But does it need to be back on television? No, nah, I'm good on Vanderpump. Why does it I'm need good. to come back? I feel like we did it. We did it. I'm good on it. Eight seasons. We done seen weddings. We've seen divorces. We've seen cheating scandals. I'm we done seen We've it seen all. Karens. We've seen it all. Everything. What else is there left to I see? I don't need it in my life. It was, it had a run. The run is over. Let's get some new blood so. in there. Let's get, create a new show. Create a new show. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, word on the street is, though, that they are casting for new people. Okay. So. I did just get excited. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I we hate don't myself. So, you need know. them. We don't need we them. Don't, I just hate those people so much that, but there's something about hating them that I've come to, to, it's not that even enjoy. Well, it's just like they're a part of my the life, show. these monsters that I turn well, on every week. How we learn to watch the show is like, you can't like them. You have to hate mm-hmm. them. And then, they're watchable. But Sheena, and, you're right. Sheena's the only one I, I, I like. I have a soft spot for Sheena. I Me too. too. Guys, I love Sheena. And she's doing so well now with her new boo. They're living in San Diego. I feel like they've been <laughs> they've been together for one day, then the quarantine hit, and then <laughs> this is Sheena's dream. I love it. Um, okay, so let's get into some shows. Should we start? Let's start with Potomac briefly because we're going to give a very kind of strange caveat to Potomac, which is that our episode this week is coming out later than normally. So we're going to touch on Potomac because it just premiered, but there was kind of a two-part premiere, if you will, that has dropped. So we're going to discuss the first part and save the second part for um, another amazing guest we have this week. I will say that I have not watched it, so I will talk about it a little bit with our other guests later in the week. Great. Um, but I, and, and Sasha and, and I will discuss you and it Sasha today. <laughs> There's a lot of caveats coming up. Okay, Sasha, take us through, first of all, you were invited by Bravo and we were not to a Potomac <laughs> viewing party virtually. What, 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 what does that entail and what was it? Oh my gosh. So it was me amongst all of the Bravo holics, all of the Bravo pages, some of the best Bravo faces, you know, Bravo historian, faces Bra- Bravo, you know, the ones with like hundreds and thousands of followers. So I'm like, what? Little old me? I get to be at the virtual, you know, viewing party. So I wow. get there this and they give us down. our... This, this is tough because <laughs> honestly, my face is like red. <laughs> so I'm like sad, embarrassed. Like I, yeah. I feel bad for you. I, I would feel bad if I were you also. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. That so, also yeah, so felt they hurtful. Said, yeah, thank you for your pity, I'll say. Go on. Tell us about it. So prior to the virtual screening, they sent all of us our, you know, our confessional backgrounds to you. So we all had our Potomac different, we had different options for each Potomac lady's background to use. And I think I have Wendy's, I got Wendy's background, Dr. Wendy. Okay, Dr. Dr. Wendy Wendy. is a new character, well, person, I always call them characters. (laughs) And we're looking at you on Zoom with Dr. Wendy's background. And that's a nice background for Dr. W. Okay, go ahead. I think so. Very nice. I think so. So Dr. Wendy was there. Giselle was there. Robin was there. And Ashley Darby was there. Okay. And Ms. Let's, LaDom? LaDom was, LaDom was not there. <gasps> Does LaDom know how to get on Zoom, though? <laughs> she, she might not. She, that You know what? That's probably why you she know, wasn't there. It, well, maybe she doesn't have internet at the house that it's she's a new house. pretending to live in. <laughs> she has another new house. She yeah. has a new There's house. A new house, a new house? A new house. Mm-hmm. Are the pizza mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. coming back to see if she's going <laughs> to actually be there? there's going to be shade thrown at that new house. There already was in the first. Oh, oh, you, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know it. You know it will happen. Okay. So was, then was, what? So everybody watches it on, on your screen and then everyone's in their own little boxes. Well, no, so they sent us the, the links prior, like the day before they sent us the link for the first and the second episode the day before. And then we get on there and basically there was like a moderator asking them questions, you know, about the season and just different inside scoops about the season and then they, then we get the opportunity to ask her questions. I got to ask Giselle a question. What did you, ask? did you ask? Now, I know you saw the first episode, Casey, yes. where, so basically Giselle is back with her ex-husband who was a cheating ass fucking mega pastor who I cannot stand. Like cheating mega pastor in the same sentence. It's like, you can't be no, more low down dirty than that. No. So they're back together. And the and father the of her ten- three kids. Yes. 
So the on the episode, her daughters are very upset that they are back together. And that is a red flag, if you ask me, that your three daughters who love their dad are very upset that he is back with their mother. It's very so weird because I, I, I thought very oh, weird. they hate him or something, but they don't hate him. They don't. But they know that they did. he did their mom wrong and they probably are like, she doesn't deserve this guy. You know? And they kind of feel so left I, out. It was very weird. They feel like he, when he he's calling them more to kind of oh, impress yeah. Giselle. It's right. Very odd. Right. So everyone's kind of asking, you know, their little like questions like, oh, what, you know, what would your tagline be for another cast member if you could write one in? And someone was asking uh, Monique about how, you know, Monique potty trained her baby at four months old. What? By the way, by the way we'll get into that. We'll get into that. That really hurt me to see with a three-year-old <laughs> who's not potty trained. My newly seven-year-old daughter just literally showed me her shit stained underwear this morning. <laughs> so I'm having an issue. Yeah. That's hard. It was hard to see for me. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're asking her those questions. They're asking Ashley Daubry about her postpartum, you know, the anxiety that she's having. So I asked Giselle, what was the issue with her daughters that they had so much, you know, concern about her getting back with the, their dad. And if they'd gotten to a place where they were okay with it, what did they do to get there? Was there some sort of family meeting? Was there counseling? She basically didn't answer the question. She said, well, um, they love their dad. My girls love their dad. And, uh, yeah, we're we're back together and we're doing great. I was like, well, okay. Okay. That's all I was getting on that topic. So she is she saying was, that they're still together. Yes, they're still together. Okay, so, this is poor Giselle. I kind of feel like, because this happened last season where she was back with Sherman at the top of the season, and now she's back with Jamal's his name, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of like, oh, I just feel like Giselle is such a great catch so far be above and away, but that she does sell herself short. It's I like know. these guys that were like, no, everyone around her is like, this is not going to work out. I know. I know. But I want it to. I- I wonder what it is. Like, what what insecurity is is there? She's a great mother. Yeah. She is so smart. She's gorgeous. She's mm-hmm. seemingly self made. Like, what? Yeah. Are, what? What? You know? Like, yeah. where? Where do you? Where is the insecurity coming from? I don't know why she sells herself short because I'm sure she knows she's gorgeous. She's bad. You know, she's a bad lady. She's what? she's got everything going for her. Was Doctor Wendy our newest? Oh yes, Doctor Wendy was there. Yes. Well, tell me about Doctor Wendy and how she presented herself at the at the showing at the screening, if you will. Oh, she was great. She was super fun. She seemed like she was really comfortable being herself. She wasn't like she said when she started filming, she wasn't like intimidated by any sort of like uh, maybe fitting in or have feeling like she needed to like sort of portray some she sort of She did not image. seem She's, intimidated right off the bat. She just no, came right in, yeah. but not in a bad way. No, I had no, in the first episode, I'm like trying to get a beat on her. You know, because she seems very nice. She's I looked her up, you know, she's worked at Johns Hopkins, she's a professor. I did think the way she got right in there with Giselle and was like, basically like, oh, I know, you know, I know your, your boyfriend or your, her ex, who's the pastor. She's like, we've marched together. Giselle's face when she kept saying how much she knows Jamal. It was just like, <laughs> she was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then just like wandered uh-huh. off. So was like, <laughs> okay. It was, there was something kind of weird there, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, nobody wants anybody around them that knows their ex that's a cheater. Like, what does she possibly know that other stuff that I don't know? Now, was it Dr. Wendy in the preview for what's coming up that got attacked by the bird? I don't know. <laughs> was it? I think it is. Because, in the <laughs> yes, in the preview coming up, she was like, it's so nice to meet all of you. But she's now I'm from all the side. in. Now she's I'm like, all oh, whatever she's this like, is. It's so nice. To, okay, so this is from, it's not coming up next week. This is oh like coming God. up in the season, so we can all look forward to it. But I was crying because we know, you know, Monique now has a bird named, oh my God, what's her first name? T'Challa. T'Challa. <laughs> yes. Um, she, so she doesn't have enough and it's a very large, large parrot. And so at one point, Dr. Wendy is like, and it's so nice to meet you and I'm really looking forward to getting to know. And then a bird just like, the bird attacks her head. <laughs> So that to me is a favorite. It's a moment I'm looking forward to seeing. Oh my gosh. Mm, that's yeah, a, that's the way in the bushes good. Really I mean, I really it's need hilarious. to know. You know, in the first episode, we didn't really see like a lot of the women together as much. Of course, now um, Candace is doing, as you would expect, a one year anniversary wedding party with a cash bar. Mm-hmm. Called Diamond Diamonds and Denim. Themed. What? Mm-hmm. And 
everyone shows up and that's kind of when we saw everyone mixed and matched. We were pretty much getting caught up with everyone and with Darby. What's her name? Um, Ashley has her son who looks exactly like Michael, who I do think is cute. Um, even though he looks exactly like Michael. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. You have to it's, ride the wave of emotions. A, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. When you look at him, but she says their <laughs> quote better than ever. You know, and she said we had, she said we had our troubles. We had our problems, but we've overcome them. Like, really? Have you? We'll see about that. We'll see about that. And he was trying to do all of his comedy in the first scene. He was like, oh, you think a bear's coming? Oh, (laughs) he was doing all this crazy comedy that just didn't make any sense and trying to be so light. And it was so practiced and weird. And he's such a fucking creeper to me. Oh, my God. I know. Every time I look at him, he just like makes my skin crawl. I'm just like, oh, so gross. And Candace is a handful. Did the ladies have a reaction to, I, I can't believe they didn't, Candace's cash bar. How did that go over? Oh, oh, LaDom said, to each its own. <laughs> but LaDom was, was not happy. LaDom was not happy. At all. You know, at all. Candace is a handful. Um, it did make me laugh when Ashley called her a hamster face hoe. <laughs> and then oh my god hilarious and then her and her husband go and look at the venue for the one year anniversary and they're like they're like oh well what's your budget and she's like we're thinking five thousand like it's like oh well we started twenty thousand dollars and then she's like okay well i'll go for a walk and you guys discuss that i say and then they end up having a cash bar yeah and chris is like absolutely not and candace is like i i'll take care of this what you, you know? do you have a backyard party and have a bar set up where no one has to pay shit and everyone will be fine. But you don't have it to begin with. No or, one who's yeah. just paid and gone to every event for your wedding I one know. year ago needs to be there. Now, I appreciated it as a viewer, but I I didn't need it. Now, Kim Richards needs to take a high ponytail kind of note from Giselle in this episode. Yes. That's how to do a tight, high blonde pony. Kim Richards' um, oh, yes. ponytail looked painful. And mm. upsetting. And it seems like it was doing, trying to do more than, like, she can't afford a facelift at this point, was my theory. <laughs> so she was like, I'm going to back it all up with a hairband. And that's how I'm going to work this this thing out. Now, what are your feelings on Candace, Sasha? Um, I think she's great TV. I think she makes a great villain. She actually reminds me a lot of Kenya. But uh, I'm not a <laughs> not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I, mean, I think she she looks amazing. Her hair is laid, and I'm going to talk about this in my breakdown because the hair isn't always on point. Because Giselle has really beautiful hair, but she wears her wigs are a little bit questionable that she wears on top of her hair, which you probably can't even tell the difference because they're like the exact same shade as her hair. Which I don't even know why she wears them. But in this in the scenes that Giselle wears a wig, her hairline is like tilt it up and i'm like girl just let the wig go but candace on the other hand her hair looks amazing every episode her style her body she is snatched i wrote down i said candy candace is in the testimonials her fresh kind of beachy bob i gotta say gorgeous gorgeous. she looks gorgeous. gorgeous I love when her hair is in that sort of symmetrical bob that she does sometimes. You know, where it's like kind of like asymmetrical. Uh, yeah. Yes. Like that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Asymmetrical, like kind of like harsh cut at the, like kind of yeah. like looking like, like one of those 80s, like vil- woman villain look. I love that look on her. It's yeah. No, I, but I live for in a cringy way, her dynamic between her and her mother. Oh. She's giving me like Tinsley and Dale vibes, just so codependent and toxic. Her mother, and then her mother runs into Giselle on the street, we learn, and told her basically, like, she's still paying for things, even though Candace is saying that she's not. It was also really upsetting to see Chris wearing diamond earrings. Anyway. um, You better stop. You better stop it. I gotta stop. You know, Candace is a lot. And basically, and then we'll we'll move on and kind of discuss the rest of Potomac, but I do want to say, you know, what we're hurtling towards this season. I would, okay, this is also what I love about Potomac. For, so I know anyone listening is going to be like, well, they've done this on other franchises, but they haven't committed to it this hard. Potomac last season and this season opens with this like horror theme where they're going back in time, but it's not just like, oh, here's a fight. And then they're going to say like seven months before mm-hmm. it's like, ah, ah, ah. and they have it mm-hmm. like weird footage. It looks like Blair Witch Hunt, the way they're <laughs> uh-huh. filming it. 
And basically what we're coming to learn is that there is going to be a beyond a physical altercation. It opens on the camera is on a first aid kit and the first, the the kit says crew on the top. (laughs) Like someone is getting majorly hurt. And then you just hear the camera shaking and someone's yelling, (gasps) Monique, Monique. (laughs) And then Giselle is giving a big speech to everyone. And she's saying that like someone has, has taken them all down and, do we believe that to be Candace? Absolutely. I think that some will say that maybe, Mo- I think they're saying that Monique maybe did the first hit, but Candace provoked her to that point. I'm of not course quite sure. she did. Candace and that is how you. Candace is like Candace Kenya. can get you Exactly. To exactly. I think that Candace flipped Monique's hair or something. Uh oh. And don't, do not touch a black woman's hair now. Don't do it. That's a quick way to get slapped. And I'm sure she was also saying the worst possible things you could say to a human. Oh, because yeah. Because the things oh, yeah. she tweets are so wild. Oh, my God. I know. Very wild. She's she's a lot, but I... God, if I don't I enjoy having her with her. us. I feel bad for her. Why? Because her dad, her dad abandoned her. And her mom is fucking psycho. Her mom hit her with a purse. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect from this woman? A grown woman hitting her <laughs> grown is, daughter. I forgot about purse. that beautiful moment. That was tough. That was to be hit with a with your mother's purse. As an you adult. know, they say, and no one take this the wrong way, I don't know, but that therapist kids sometimes are the most unhinged, and I think we're seeing that. Yeah. But I think that's because yeah. her mom is the most unhinged therapist you could probably yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, talk about at the, at the uh, party, her mom gets on the mic and is like, Thank you for making love to my daughter. What? She said that on the mic at her party. At the anniversary party. Okay, the last really funny thing, thank you for reminding me of that, is when Candace gets on the mic at her one-year party and she's like, you know what, I have such strong women around me and they have all have such, you know, they know so much about marriage. I'd like uh, my mother and uh, Ms. Karen Uger to please address the crowd about marriage. Karen gets up there in front of everyone and is basically like, you know, my husband and I are going through a lot of problems right now. I was like, what? Who gets up there and says that? I appreciate LaDom's honesty. I appreciate it. I feel like I, I love Karen Huger so much. I know. She is one of my favorite housewives of all time. What's going on with her and her husband? You know, is it's one of those, is that what she's intimating? No, it seems like it's one of those situations similar to Nene and Gray, where he's, you know, he's used to a certain dynamic. He's used to being the breadwinner, her being the homemaker. And now that she's has her La Dame fragrance and she's a businesswoman, he doesn't really know how to, you know, he doesn't know where he fits in her world. So he's insecure, you know, and th- that's, I feel like that's what the problem is. And she, he doesn't really know how to like be in the relationship without being sort of the, head of the home, the head of the household, the man of the home, you know? I think that seems to be what the problem is. You're real you're like a housewife's um what what's the word I, I'm thinking of? Like a therapist, like or like like a seer. Like a you I feel like you're getting at what's underneath them in a way that I'm finding very interesting. Like you're well, thank seeing, you, girl. that's like you you see the underneath <gasps> I'm like, I don't know what that says about Psychic? me. It's like you have nothing else. You have nothing else to do with your time. Uh, then, Asha, then reminder: <laughs> this is our job. Yes, yes. Reminder: um, some of us were invited to a, a premiere, so you know this is their job. Honestly, as to- I am like oh regressing to like a 13 year old version of myself, where I'd hear someone have a birthday party, and I would find a way to let them know I knew I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was very cockamamie me and just my lowest self. I'm like, how do I, I guess we're doing it now, I, but I uh-huh. want people to, to tell other Bravo people that we weren't <laughs> like, I, I'm upset. Do we check our DMs? No. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> yes. We don't. Um, so that's, that's hard. And can you quickly just speak on the Karen's expression when Monique showed up with the bird on a leash? Please. Karen's like, what? Please. You're going to show up with my house. You have a brand new baby at home. You're not going to bring your baby over to my house. You're going to bring your bird on a leash. If you don't get out of my house right now. It was truly so, so crazy. And I did also write down Karen's face. If I had the technology to slow it down, I would have when she, and I know we talked about it, when she said it's a cash bar, the look on Karen's face before <gasps> she collected herself, it was a slow burn shock. <gasps> Just shock. Mm-hmm. Karen's the best. All right. Well, we will get go go into more Potomac this week, but let's take a little break and we'll come back with 
with Roni. We're back. Oh, we Roni. Back. Roni, Roni. We're Roni. back. Roni, Roni, Roo. Roni, 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 Roo. Roni, Roni, Roo. <laughs> what yeah, an episode. They're in Mexico. Finally. We all know shit hits the fan in Mexico. But before they go to Mexico. Before? Ramona says some real questionable things. Okay. I about mean, Leah. Ramona has dug up some information, which is like, did she even dig it up or she just exploited some information that Leah probably had online or had written something about mental health? And I I read this since Leah, I guess, has come out with kind of an article about the fact that she has bipolar too and the struggle that that's been. Which I have many friends who suffer from that and, and, and also thrive with that. So mm-hmm. I think... Mm-hmm. Ramona he did hit a new low gossiping, I think, about Leah's mental health situation and saying she's on pills and she shouldn't be mixing alcohol with. It's, she's a monster, whether she remembers me or not. She I really also was. think it's such, whether she remembers you or not, would you have different feelings about her had she remembered I'd say, you? you know what? She was having a hard day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. I find it so old school and so out of touch and so even beneath our housewives to use mental health and uh, and a, and something people literally struggle with as a way to hurt people. You know what I'm saying? Like we can hurt, e- they all hurt each other in the most low blow ways, but finding out someone is bipolar and using that to shame them feels so, um, you're not going to get any on your side with that. You're not going to, I just she like, thought she was and, going and to. Was like, what are you trying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it felt like such, it, it just made her look like Mona's really tough to watch this season. Mm-hmm. And the sad thing is she thought everyone was going to be like, Ramona's right. She shouldn't be drinking mm-hmm. on this medication. She should be locked up. And instead, everyone was like, Ramona, how dare you spread someone's mental health, like delicate mental health information on a fucking public platform? And she looked so terrible. And now she's backtracking and saying, like, I wish her all the best. I just I I I I hope she's okay and I should never have said that. Right. And let's not forget in the confessional, she's still saying what she's saying, and they just filmed those confessionals like what, two <laughs> weeks ago? Yesterday, yes. <laughs> So you still for the same when you were not buying this apology <laughs> whatsoever. Oh my God. She's the worst. Now I, I want to say something that I know you guys are going to take me down and I, I just want to just say it. I just want to give a little airtime for possibly <laughs> another viewpoint. Did we feel like Leah was going a little too far at a 65 year old woman's birthday? Absolutely. Okay. Love her Absolutely. as I do. Love no. her as I do. I do. No. I, I love I love Leah. Love. I really do. Guys, but, no. She was fine. She I, was livening up the joint. She was having a good time. Read that, the that, room. that joint doesn't read want livening, room. Danielle. Read the room. I've never been able to read a room, including this one. But I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, whatever you can do to spice up a party. And I think for Ramona, it was also that Leah looked incredible. Of course. And for Ramona, mm-hmm. she always wants well, yeah. to be the standout in the room. And any woman's physical beauty and confidence is a threat. And Leah was showing those two things. And that was the threat. Not her behavior, but her showing yeah. those two things about herself. No, yeah, you're right. You you are right about that. But I I feel like the whole like humping, like the train of women humping Luann, that would <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think that would have happened had she not started it. And I felt like it was like a big kind of like f you to, to Ramona, which I'm all uh, down for that. I don't care that this happened like, at Ramona's event. I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to imagine if this was like a 65 year old woman we like. Okay, let's picture that. It would be a tad much. Like when the dress was above her ass, this is not me shaming anyone. Like I love Leah's style. I love Leah's body. Leah's my favorite house, new house that we've had in forever. I'm just simply saying it felt a hair far. And maybe I'm the grandma here. Just a hair. Now, do I want to be at a party <laughs> a with Leah? Yes. I would die to be in that like hump sandwich with Elise coming and taking me from behind. But 
But I will say when, when Sonia got up and was like stomping on the glass, that's one of the greatest things I've ever seen with my eyes. But it is amazing. crazy that, that it was like amazing. Ramona's not really bad at Sonia at all. And in fact, was explaining it to Sonia as though Sonia wasn't at the party. Like she was just gossiping about someone else. She's like, well, and then you and, and Sonia's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like what happened next? Uh-huh. She's like, well, then you got up on the table and you could have gotten someone's glass <laughs> in like- someone's eye. And Sonia's like, ooh, did I? Oh, right, that could have right. happened. <laughs> She's like, I don't, I wasn't the only one dancing on tables. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure you were, Sonia. I didn't see anyone else dancing on a glass table but you. It was the most amazing yeah. image. I wish they had flashed back to it many, many more times. I guess I just did think when she had to pull the dress fully down, I was like, okay. I saw her ass. Like, yeah. her ass was out. Yeah. Sorry, it was. I mean, I felt like, sorry. 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 But again. <laughs> <laughs> but again. Again, I'm glad it happened. But again, and I love what's Leah. First, having a little of your ass shown because you got a little wasted, or stomping on a mirror decoration and getting shards into people. All Absolutely. of that just flew out the window. Fine, fine, fine. But one hot woman with a fantastic bod shows a little of their ass, and we're all it's day classic. Just no, you're like no, that. you're absolutely right. Yeah, no, you're right. She you're definitely right, let Sonia right. off the hook because Sonia doesn't look like Leah, and that's the bottom line. And oh yeah, she's so jealous of Leah. It's such a bad look Ugh. for her, and it's 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 just base and sad. And I find Ramona to be just a, or, or Avery to be just a little Ramona herself, mm-hmm. and she's upset. I'm like, I don't know. I don't. When I saw Avery and her friends standing there, I felt so much anger. Ugh. They look like they want to be like the Gossip Girls or something, just like showing. Yes. Ugh. It, it, and it's just sad. Um, let's talk about the spa day. <laughs> and Luann's wig. Looking like <laughs> looking like Peggy Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> that wig. Guys, oh, my God. Blue and ba- I like blue and bangs. Oh, my God. Danielle, I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, are you just purposely taking, being oppositional today? No. Well, I'm just telling you my truths and I want to be accepted in this safe yes. Zoom. You're right. And, and and you should be accepted for your truths because, uh, you know, oftentimes you're, most of the times you're right. <laughs> I just I love how Ramona's appreciate. like, you know, loving it, telling her that she looks like Catherine McPhee. And then Sonia walks in and she's like, what the fuck is this shit on your head? I'm like, thank you, Sonia. What the fuck is going on? Catherine McPhee. She's like, what's that actress? What's that actress? McPhee. McPhee. Which did make me even feel worse that. And then she goes. She didn't know me. Right? But she didn't remember. <laughs> shockingly, she's like, married to that old man. David Foster. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> With that old man. <sighs> okay. When they went to do this body, it did really make me laugh. It's like the minute the women got, like, just got seated. They're, they're just simply in the spa now getting seated. Leah's like, I need to talk to you. Like, they all just abandon immediately and are, like, gossiping in another room. And then Leah's, like, storming out. I was kind of like, this isn't totally the event to storm out of. But, you know, they are who they are. And then Ramona keeps looking at her watch and then they're all like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, I think she's just like, it was fresh in her mind because it was the night before. And she's like, how am I supposed to sit in a room and act like nothing is going on? And this bitch is sitting here ignoring me like I don't exist. That's and true. she's ignoring That's her true. and talking to that other woman who had recently come out of prison who's like, you know, really be like get, getting her life together. And there's Ram- her having to talk to Ramona. Can you imagine? Oh, my coming God. Out of prison, oh, my God. The having worst. to talk to Ramona. Oh, just- Ramona's like, now what are we getting done over here? I was like, I can't. I really can't. And then the poor, the girl's like, uh, you know, yeah, I got, you know, arrested when I was 17. Uh, wrong place at the wrong time. And Lou's like, huh, yeah, tell me about it. Uh, no, nah, Lou. You were, at no, the, Lou. you were at the right place doing the wrong thing. You were. Yeah. Yep. Don't get it twisted. And it was the right time as well. Exactly. It was, yeah. It was all of it. Like, Luann's always like, oh, they just uh, happen to... You know, they got the wrong person. No, uh, you were there assaulting an officer in the, someone else's hotel room. You're going to try to group yourself in with this 17-year-old girl that probably was like, you know, hanging out on the street somewhere in her neighborhood to you get wasted and get a DUI, try to hit a cop upside the head with a door. And then <laughs> slipping out of your handcuffs and trying to get out of the cop car. Wrong place, oh wrong God. time, guys. Wrong place, wrong handcuffs. <laughs> Lou's like, I'm right there with you. 
Oh my God. Okay. We, we, then we head off to Mexico and we are, Sonia has decided that her way of, you know, combating her looking like alcoholism is to only drink champagne. Champagne and wine. And then Coca-Cola with rosé. Mm. I'm like, boo-boo. It ain't about what you're drinking. It might take you longer to get there, but you're going to get there because you want to get there. What you and Was she on pills as well? I think it's going to be revealed this next episode. Because she said on Watch What Happens Live that she was mixing some stuff, that she, some medication that she was on. It seemed like she was on like a horse tranquilizer and rosé. Like it, she, she was, was slurring in a out way. Out of it. When she, when she was like... I got a chubby pussy. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, she's, and then completely naked with that woman doing her hair. That oh, poor woman. And she's walking around oh, like, I've got the unstoppable pussy. That's why I fucked a New York Ranger. What What New York Ranger were you, are you fucking? Never have I felt so bad as I do for the lovely people working in this home. When Ramona, when she's always telling everyone everything that's going on in her life. She's like, now that one I wore, that one's got to be steamed. Because, of course, I haven't worn that one since Barcelona. And the guy's like, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't care. And when she's like, I've been to some very nice places, but I've never seen a staff like this. She was like jizzing in her pants. Servants galore. So when she said to their faces, servants galore. Dare, they're not your oh servants, God. bitch. I know. I know. There's a staff I of know. people that have jobs. They work hard for your stupid fucking ass that doesn't deserve anything you have. You idiot. Oh my God. It made me so few. She's fucking ridiculous. And she's unpacking her stuff. She's like, oh yeah, I got my age spy Ramona to give to everyone here so they can look like me. Bitch, don't nobody want to look like you? Nobody wants to look like Although I like, she has a good body, but yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay. How about when they thought when they were on the way there and they thought there was a vibrator in Lou's bag and Lou's like, it's just my juicer. <laughs> and then Dorinda in her testimonial says one of the grosser Ooh. things I've ever heard when she says, as she's pointing to her vagina, this baby mixes some other juice. Ah! Mm. Mm. Hey, you, you go off on Dorinda in your Bravo breakdowns in a way that makes me laugh so hard, Sasha. When you said when she came down... When she was in uh, Bluestone Manor, and you said that the dress that she wore at Bluestone Manor, she looked like a glitter moth. Really? <laughs> fucking uh, killed me. <laughs> a glitter <laughs> moth with go go boots. Oh, that killed me. Yeah. Where are you with Dorinda this season? I'm not, I'm not a Dorinda fan. I've been a Dorinda fan up until this season, which is so disheartening because I really liked her. I liked the whole blonde hair, blue eyed mob sort of vibe that she had going on. But this season with the whole Tinsley and the turkey based her, like, that really, that turned me off majorly. And she hasn't redeemed herself yet. No, she hasn't. And she's really latched on to Leah because I think she started to, she got wise really quick of like, oh, people are going to like Leah. Like Leah's cool. Leah's, you know, mm -hmm. she's not like these old ladies. So in a way, I kind of like they have a friendship, but it felt like we were light on the trip. I'm like, we need one more. Had completely forgotten that other person was Elise. But I was like, I do think they need to add one more younger gal to like kick it around with. It does feel like a, like Leah and her aunts. Absolutely. I agree with that. But I'm loving what I'm seeing every single second of it. Believe me. And I also feel like she wanted to make Leah an ally because she saw that, oh, whatever Leah drinks, she is a whole nother Leah. So she's not somebody that you want to go toe to toe with. And I think Dorinda saw that. She's like, let me go ahead and put her in my back pocket. Make her my little, and do these little toasts and say, oh my God, I really admire you and respect you as a mother. So that when Leah does go off the deep end, she doesn't come for Dorinda. Right. Instead, she's just giving her strange, like, see-through uh, cheetah print caftans. Honestly, she looked gorgeous. I did like her in that caftan. It was the only thing Dorinda's ever, and she wasn't even wearing it, she was holding it, but I kind of felt like, Dorinda, you should be wearing this. What right? else, what are we seeing? Yes. These, like, colorful, like, these explosions of color that she wears. I would say Dorinda needs less color in her outfits and in her drapes, oh as God. we've seen from Shame the throat testimonials. Throat. Yeah. Now, Sonia, however, is drunken, like a, look like a drunken blossom. You know, that character from TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was yeah. just sort of like, I don't know what's happening with this look, but it was. I just want to go back really quick to when Sonia Morgan, New York, was unveiled at Century 21. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. It made me laugh so hard. Sonia just kept saying over and over again to her team. She's like, I was so nervous. Everything will be shipped on time because I didn't think we have enough merchandise to fill it. I mean, uh, who knew we had so much Sonia Morgan and why? I didn't. It's like, so do, you don't know anything about your business. She's like, this is great. I had no idea we had all these designs and these styles. She seemed to be completely in the dark of what outfit Sonia Morgan, New York, consisted of. It was of. like she was yeah. seeing them for the first time the same way Jorinda was and Ramona was. Like, she was like, this team really pulled it out of their ass. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She never set eyes on most of the fashions. As Kyle did in an earlier episode, she had no idea what her collection looked like. So would we, should we expect anything else from Sonia? I would be like really shocked if she showed up professional and put together and know what's going God, on. No, and I don't want anything different, of course. Right. Like, right. This is exactly where I want her to live. Like, I love it. And I actually was so happy for her to see her clothes like front and center. Yeah. I thought it was really cute. Totally. I love Sonia. I really do. She's, I'm worried she's, about she's, her, but I love her. She's up there for me. Top five of yeah. faves. Mm-hmm. I really like her. I found it for interesting sure. that Ramona was just like so excited for Sonia. She's like, oh my God, you did it. You're, you know, you're so important. It's like, she can only be happy for somebody that she thinks is a hot mess that she, in the back of her mind, she thinks she's better than her. So it's easy for her to let that have been Leah or anyone else. She'd be like, mm. oh. Well, it's tacky or it looks cheap or, well, you know, whatever she would have said. I feel like Ramona had to tell herself, like, okay, this is discount. You can be happy. Right. This is and she also Which, by the way, it's like say, the greatest store on earth, I think. Oh, I love oh, yeah. Century 21. Yeah. But I also have to say that I think she kept saying this out loud. So I think there was just a running loop in her mind given to her by like some hypnotherapist that just said, women supporting women, women supporting uh-huh. women, women supporting uh-huh. women. Because she said it so much that like someone had to tell her like, that's something you can say that makes you look better than you seem. And she, so she doesn't know what that even means. She just learned it like, you know, phonetically or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where, where was Elise on this trip? I heard them talking about that she was supposed to come, but they didn't want her to come because they felt like she was judging them. Like whenever they would get drunk that because remember when they went to Newport and she was just like, oh, do you even remember last night that the girls collectively decided for her to not go to Mexico? Ooh, wow. That's a tough one. Wow. They can do that. They hold that power. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. That's I mean, what I it heard. It was a really nice house. And I, I appreciated that they were all giving Dorinda credit for what the producers found. Unless I know. Everyone's Dorinda, like, Dorinda, like, but did what? Dorinda really find it? Can someone tell me? <laughs> How did the trip start? Gosh, you seem to have a pretty direct line to uh, <laughs> the higher ups at Bravo. I mean, you can ask. Can you tell us? Or does if they're like, okay, Dorinda, we're paying for everything. You go on Airbnb. This is, right, right, right. Your, this is your job. Your only job is you have to go on Airbnb and find the house for this much money. That's your job. I bet they do that. They're probably like assign one person each season. Like, okay, this is going to be your season that you present the trip and pretend like they're And I this. remember Cynthia failed. Oh my God. When she did her season. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget Cynthia that. Failed. Never forget that. Cynthia Never failed her Google search. And Teddy Google. failed when she brought everyone Teddy to failed. her house. <laughs> In wherever that was. Oy. But Dorinda seems to have succeeded. In that I love how. Well, I'm excited. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I love how Ramona was so excited that she's like, Dorindy, Dorindy. Just gave her like a whole different name. Because she was so excited. Because she was so excited to be around luxury. <laughs> yes. And like, we do all get excited about a trip, you know, but like then when she like got in the water and her clothes on, it was just, it was so gross. She was just like, I'm in, I'm rich. It just felt so, oh, like so like her i'm fancy free women supporting women fancy free (laughs) and you know what i I will i'll I'll, lou is like i'm not bothered as much by lou this season me neither i'm not she had her one moment in the berkshires where she's like of course you know went off on sonia but other than that but she was drunk then exactly she was drunk then so sober lou she's been talking and she looks gorge this season oh my god i'm like yes lou gorgeous unbelievable her skin radiant i, I don't know what she's doing amazing and i, I mean i guess i not do kind of like her I, it's not even like it's a friendship but i like the kind of easy back and forth manner she has with leah i think it's kind of fun yeah it's like not too deep but they kind of enjoy each other i, I don't know i like it i like her too and like she's it. slightly a voice of reason like the episode where ramona was like oh i blacked out and she's like nah bitch you you blacked out drunk 
I, I like that she's there, you know, kind of calling the ladies out. Like, yes. I don't been on this show with you for what ten years. Don't try it. Don't even try it. <laughs> and I like when they're both bitching to each other. When like Leah's bitching to her about Ramona, Ramona's bitching to her. She wasn't really taking sides. She was just almost like what we've been doing with each other. And I was like, well, mm, yeah, mm, well, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> uh huh, mm-hmm. uh huh. Like she wasn't quite like giving in to either of them. She was just kind of being like, well, that's a good point. Yeah, well. Um, and then I just kind of like it. I, I'm liking her I am right too. now. I like her. And she's as really, much again as you can like. Exactly. She's women. really friendly again. with me on, on Instagram, Luann. She what? Is, she's very wow. friendly with me. Okay. You yeah. really do have your, your hooks in all sorts well, of Well, because I'm talking you, shit you. about them on Instagram and tagging them in it. So oh, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, right, right. Don't tag. Don't so, tag. So basically it's like you're they're Leah, Leah and Dorinda. They don't want you to, to do them dirty. Right. See, that's why we try to beg people not to tag. Oh yeah. Because I we're tag. scared, but you, oh, you I just tag. feel. They all follow me except for Dorinda. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Ramona, Ramona was the first one to follow me. And she, okay. Yeah. <gasps> and she, there was okay. one of the videos where I was talking shit about her. She did the dance girl emoji. So she's like, she gives no. So Ramona, so what you're telling me is Ramona knows who you are. Uh, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> oh, we'll get into housewives that know who I am. Wait till we get into Beverly Hills. Now, the- girl, you, you gonna want to hear this one. You will want to hear this okay. one. Okay, let's take a quick break. And we're back okay. with Beverly Hills, guys. Okay. I I just want to quickly just throw out two comments that um, an old guest sent me just off the top, Zachary Sergi. He just said quickly, Kim now looks like a melting candle. Why the wick-like top ponytail? And unfortunately, why is her hair the same color as her skin, which is also the same color as her camel-clothed palette? (laughs) And that's hard, you know, but I'm just reporting the news of the day, guys. This is just me as a... And then, of course... Brandy's face. He also said Brandy's face is on the Mama Elsa train, and that's a train to nowhere. Oh, <laughs> guys, I'm just reporting this. I don't feel I, this. No, and I'm just laughing. I because had to that's say what it. One does, but I wow. had to say it. I mean, he ain't. It, where's the lie? Where's the lie? <laughs> <laughs> where's the lie? There's no one. Where is the lie? Not one to be found. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start off by saying I resent that Teddy is at the kind of middle, I put in quotes, of Lucy Lucy Apple Juicy and now Denise Brandygate. There could not be a more boring person in the middle at the crossroads of all of this. Like, I wish this was Erica that had received all of this. It's like Erica's being reduced to like a fucking bit player to just like giving me eyes behind her Madeline Kahn-esque weird whatever that lace front hat she's wearing <laughs> i don't know i'm just like uh now we have to deal with teddy actually try to make these real moments it just sucks she's not the she's not who we need right now and i take umbrage that's right umbrage <laughs> with the fact that she's upset that someone's saying she lives in her father's shadow. Of course she fucking does. When your father is a world-renowned rock and roll superstar, yeah, guess what? Fucking do something else. I live in Paul Wilson's see- shadow. <laughs> He's a political <laughs> analyst. You know, we all live in our parents' shadow. She must have heard this millions of times. It's just she was like her voice was trembling. I was like, this is a real trigger for Teddy. I know, and I'm just like, get the fuck over it. Do something with your life that makes you feel good enough that you don't give a fuck that your dad's John Cougar Melon camp sometimes without the cougar. Exactly. Or bring us I- Meg Ryan on the show. Yes. Until then, I don't want to hear it. Thank Deliver you. her to us on a platter. Please. Thank you. Please. Even though I don't believe they are any longer. I don't yeah. care. I'd bring like a anyway. shopping trip, a little something. <laughs> bring her anyway. Yes. Sasha, yeah. where are you this season? I mean, you sort of shared that you just feel like there's nothing here now that we're here, and I agree. Yeah, and like you said, Teddy's the last person that I wanted to hear this news from. Like, you, you're you exactly right about that. I'm so done with Teddy and her accountability bullshit. Like, I'm over her. And her working out while pregnant on vacation. Like, uh, if get out of my face with that. That's triggering for me, bitch. I'm on vacation. Me too. Me, yes, it I'm on vacation. I'm trying to enjoy my vacation. I'm trying to have a drink. I don't want to see just, that. It was triggering it was triggering for everyone. Yeah. How dare she? How dare I she? I know. 
Yeah, I'm I'm good on Teddy. I think that can this be her last season? I mean, can we just be done with Teddy? It's got to be, but I feel like Kyle probably has it in her claw. I'm now like fully on the Dorit t- tail of like Kyle must have it in her claws to like include Teddy. Like Kyle doesn't realize that Teddy has weakened her brand big time. Mm-hmm. 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 And Kyle now has thinned out the bangs and then at one point kind of grown them enough that she's now splitting them and kind of like a greasy split. I don't, I'm worried. Have you heard the theory about like her whole facelift? Cause you know, no. so, you know, obviously if you're an actress, everyone knows that they can wig you. You didn't have to cut your bangs to do a film. So people are saying that she got a facelift and she got the bangs to distract from the facelift. But why would she want to distract from it? Meaning like the healing yeah, process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so it's not like you got a facelift. So it seems like, oh, you got a haircut. Oh, you look great. But really you got a facelift. Like, you know, because she didn't want to do the whole Sonya and like announce it to everyone. So but now it's like, oh, you got a haircut. You look bad. <laughs> 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 I'm so mean on here. I don't know why I'm being mean about these women. I don't know why. Can I say thank God for Garcelle this episode because... I will say when, uh, what's her friggin' name again? The new Sutton, one. Sutton, 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 Sutton place. sorry. I, I lost Sutton Place. When Sutton tried oh. to make a thing out of the money thing, and Garcelle just shut mm-hmm. her down with a genuine mm-hmm. apology. We've never seen that in all the years, in the annals of the show. It was refreshing. We've never seen someone yeah, be she was shut like, down. Sorry. Like, anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But also, weird. I'm like, Sutton. It's what we're all thinking. You should be happy that someone's giving you something to like mm-hmm. happen on this show. I mean, like, ooh, of co- it, it was a bold question, but I'm kind yes. of like, I don't believe in like this whole like secrecy surrounding money and all of that. Like, I think that's got its own fucking weird roots and history to it. But like Sutton, just say it like you, your husband had this money and like, granted, you raised his kids. So I'm all about you having that money, too. Right. Who gives a fuck? That's why I love how Erica Jane was yeah. like, I married mine. Just keep it 100. We all know. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? That's what everybody loves about Erica. Absolutely. It's like, yeah, that's how I got here. No problem. But then we actually see her in her own light, which is also why Teddy's so annoying. Because she's like, no, I'm not in my dad's right. shadow. Right. It's right. like, just say, yeah, like, oof. Because it is, I mean, if we're really going to go into this whole thing, it's anti-feminist to be like, you married your money, you didn't make it. Well, the system is set up so that women can't, or for many years, couldn't do both. Not in any realistic way. So women had to choose. Right. So, or didn't even have the opportunity to make right. money. So to say oh, she married her money as an insult is so fucking insulting. And so it's like, no, it's her money now. Yeah. Ooh, that's what marriage is. Like, it's, totally. you know, again, it has... So are you guys Sutton fans or no? No. No. Okay. There's a lot of... Are you? uh, Oh, absolutely not. Uh, (laughs) Absolutely not. And the thing is, okay, so I'll touch on this briefly because it's kind of a heavy topic. But the previous episode, she had the conversation with Garcelle about the hot comb and the hot kitchen. You guys Mm -hmm. recall that? Of course. Yeah. A lot of people thought it was cute and they thought it was funny. Like, oh my God, yeah, Gar- uh, Sutton is so down with black culture. She knows what a kitchen is. And then, you know, Garcelle kind of co-signed her, told her that she got cool points for that. But I was highly offended by that comment mm. because mm. I have a lot of trauma around my hair and the texture of my hair and the pain and suffering that goes behind getting your hair to look presentable. And the history of the fact that they're just now passing laws that you're not allowed to discriminate against people for their hair. Just now in 2020. Just now. So for her to sort of like make jokes about it, it like really offended me. And for her to say that she has a kitchen. Do you know what a kitchen is? We're talking about hair that is so tight that I have scars in the back of my neck from trying to get my hair straight to lay down so that I can go out and get a job. You know what I'm saying? So basically mm-hmm. I talked, I talked about that in, in the breakdown and a lot. Of, and the thing is, it's like, I don't want to say that every black person should be offended by what she said because every black woman has a different experience. And that's why I don't agree with, you know, tokenizing black women, making Garcelle this token black woman. She has to be the voice of every black woman. Cause I have other black friends that are mixed. They have softer hair texture and they thought it was funny. But they also don't have the trauma. I'm I, my dad is from Africa, so my hair is very much like four C coarse, strong curl, like hair straight reaching for the sky texture. So I made the breakdown, kind of addressing that, explaining the history of the hot comb, why it was invented, why the teeth are spread apart specifically to fit black women's hair, white women's hair. It wouldn't even straighten it because it's so fine. The teeth are spread so far apart for our texture. So I touched on it in the video. And do you know this woman had the nerve to send oh, no. me 
a DM and tell me that I clearly don't like her and she and <gasps> she has black friends. No. Oh. And I'm like, first of all, this has nothing to do with me liking you. I'm talking about what you said, what came out Offended of your mouth. Me. Thank you. And she had the nerve to dangle her white privilege and say, oh, well, I have black friends and I don't have black people working for me and you clearly don't like me and blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, wait. She said I don't have black people working for me? No, well, yeah, because in my video, I was saying that, I don't remember what I said. I said something along the lines of, the reason why she even knows what a hot kitchen is or even knows these slangs is because not because, oh, she's got a whole slew of black friends, because her ancestors owned black people and she has black people that she employs that she probably heard say these things because why else would she know them? And she does have a black person working for her on the show. On that episode, there's a black man that's her assistant who's currently still her assistant. So then she was offended that I said that she has black people working for her. And she's like, I don't have black people working for me. Which is, but, she does. but you do. And why not you take do. that moment to learn from you? You are a black woman telling her how it made you feel. And why not use that moment right then to have a, to, you are doing her a favor by saying like, this is offensive and this is why, and this is my experience. And this is what I took from right. it. And why not have used that moment to say, okay, wow, let me take a moment right. and hear you. Because she has no humility and there's no like, it, there's something very wrong because I wasn't taking that opportunity to like shame because I don't believe in that because I know that this movement this Black Lives Matter movement is fairly new and even my me I am just now learning about the microaggressions that I experienced as a child that I didn't even know I didn't even know that it, I should take offense to someone saying oh my god you're so well spoken oh thank you yeah I didn't realize that you're because you don't know in the context that that's exactly yes, being said as a, right yeah. because they're presenting it in the word form and the tone of a comp of a exactly. compliment. You know what I mean? Like you're hearing, I'm you're like, not hearing what's right, underneath like, it. You're you. just hearing that sounds like a compliment because that's what I've been told. Thank you. That or is. to show up, you know, like a friend of mine, she had braids one day she, and she wore them for a couple of months and then showed up to work without the braids. And her boss was like, oh, thank God you took those braids out. You look so much more <gasps> professional. Like, hello, you know what I mean? So things like that, the microaggressions that like you feel a certain way about them, but you don't necessarily understand them growing up, you know, because you hear them all the time. I mean, I grew up around white people. I have very few black friends just because of, you know, in the South is a lot of segregation and to go to the best schools, they, unfortunately, they're the white schools. So I understand that Sutton maybe didn't understand why that statement was offensive. So I wasn't looking to shame her. I was, it was an opportunity to educate. Most of my followers are white women. I probably have 10 to 20 black people that even follow me. So I wasn't speaking to, to my, my sisters and brothers. I'm speaking to my followers, which is a white audience. And most of them said, oh my God, I had no idea the history of a hot comb or a hot kitchen. I thought it was funny that, that Sutton said that. So I thought that she would have seen it and be like, oh my gosh, thank you for that education. But instead, she wanted yeah, to Yeah, the proper response is thank you. That's it. For for offering that to me. But it's my fault because I don't like her. It's not fair. And this notion of I have black friends is like, oh my God. Well, she's like, if, and why isn't she taking the time to learn from what's going now? Because Many black people are telling us your black friend. That's not that's, a that doesn't that's bullshit. that doesn't equate. You're not racist. You can have all of your friends can be black and you can still be racist. Sorry, yeah. sorry about it. So sorry. And you can still be racist and think you're a good person, but it's the stuff that you do, and that's why we try and you're trying to unlearn. We're trying to say Absolutely. like, oh, here's something I did not know. Someone is taking the time out to tell me instead of letting me make the same mistake over and over and over again. They're telling yes. me, take it on sp and spread the word. Intent, intent versus impact. Just because you didn't mean it to be offensive, just because you didn't mean it to be racist. No, the knee jerk reaction of like, but I didn't intend. And, that, and I'll be honest, that's where I was about two years ago. It's like, oh, but I, you know, because we're so into like not wanting to seem like I didn't, my intention wasn't our feelings and this like all this hysteria surrounding that. It's like, okay, but you did. Yeah. But you did. And this is why, and now you know, and that I'm telling you the history of this. Not only am I telling you it hurt my feelings, I'm telling you why. Yeah. 
and the history of it and what it means. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you context for it, which is far and beyond what you have to do in any way, shape or form. Nothing to do with me liking her or not. I mean, she just gave a textbook example of white fragility. I mean, I don't like her either, but go on. Right, right. <laughs> but that oh, was that wasn't that's that not wasn't, even that's that me was saying that. Was I know, I know, no, At that's all. me <laughs> saying that. I know that's not what you were saying. Um, yeah, it's just the white fragility is just like I just want like her. I want to send her that book so she can read it, so she can understand. And it's kind of hard because that book is written by a white woman. I wish it were written by a black woman, but you know. But so you want to talk about race is another great book that is written by a black yes. woman, and so um, I do think. There's a, you know, <laughs> don't spend your money though on her. <laughs> so yeah, with that being yeah. said, I don't like, I'm You've not. You've offered her some generosity already. <laughs> yeah, you did. You gave her the lesson right there. She's not taking it. So it's not, it wasn't, yeah. So I just want to be clear. Like, you know, I don't like, I'm not like, oh, I hate Sutton or I think Sutton's like just this horrible person. I think no, she. No, I said that. So Casey said that, not me. I said that. Yeah. No, you did not say that. And I, that's not what I was getting yeah it's also, also she for- is also just a you know and i i understand what you were saying danielle and i agree like if someone marries you know and into money then then that's that's fine you know obviously but i will say i do have a little edge when it comes to her of just like the amount of privilege and the way she talks about money i just find so gross i, I just i don't know and then oh, to and be offended is. when someone dare ask where she no, came well, by that I money. I'm upsetting. just a little like, oh, okay. She, yeah. I just find her just, I don't know. Well, and also acting as if you, you know, scraped and bled for this money. I don't think that you should do that. Like if you marry into money, I'm just saying like, let's take the shame out of money and let's take the hiding out of money. Because I do think that that is where like a lot of this stuff comes from. It's like, no, let's talk about it so that everybody knows what everybody's And be to. honest about where we all get money, you know, yeah. or, you know. Um, yeah. Wow. That's wild. And have you had other contact with other housewives about that topic or just in general? Well, just in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Leah, anything else you want to share? I mean, Leah and I DM a lot. She's super friendly. Like she's like, she'll, I really like, I know she'll watch a video and she'll be like, you nailed it. Or that was super funny. She's super nice. Luann's super complimentary. Sonia's super friendly. They're all really nice. Sonia is a very friendly yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. They're all that whole. All of Roni is very friendly with me, besides Dorinda. God, wow. Dorinda. I, I I'm gonna just touch on Luann one more quick second. You know, I do feel like you know with everyone, sometimes you can be like, oh, they have a nice quality. Like I don't like that person, but mm-hmm. you know, I I'm I guys, I don't know about Luann. Just like in her heart and soul. I think she's a bad person, though. No. You think, okay, okay. <laughs> you, you think, like, deep-rooted? Like, like to her core? Rotten. Like, Ramona, bad person? Like, rotten. Ramona is rotten. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's rotten. <laughs> oh, man. That's... I know. And look again, that's Casey saying that. <laughs> look. That's Sasha Danielle. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. At, because I think Ramona in the is same way I think core. Ramona is and Vicky is Vicky Gumbel. Vicky's side. rotten to yeah, the Vicky core. Is. I think and, and Tamara. I think, ooh, Tamara's rotten Lord, to the mercy, core. Tamara. I can't stand that woman. Okay, but I'm. You know what? I'm open. I'm open for. And I will say, I do think since Luann's gone through all of this, I'm seeing more humanity in her. Yeah. I just yeah. think she loves to put herself above other people, and that is just a real sticking point. For well, me. as you said in another one of your breakdowns, Sasha. Yes, and you said this about all of them, but she's a narcissist. They're narcissists. I'm a narcissist, as you said. Like, this is something we right. know. So I do believe, like, again, we are not, these are, most of them are not good people in the context. Of, but I do think there is some good in life. I do. I believe that there are elements of good. Okay. I, I do. But again, that can change on a dime, as we know. On and a show. big reason why is because on this past episode, the way that the women responded to her I doubt that these women that have gone through what they have gone through are going to sit there and bullshit her if they really didn't like her. Like, they really were like, thank you, Luann. Like, really appreciate you. Made you know, and you're right. And that was very heartwarming. I really that was felt, very yeah, nice. I felt like she was genuine in, the, in her intent to just really sort of, like, try to give them a day to feel good about themselves and yeah. advocate for them. Guys, look. As we know on this show, the minute we say <laughs> it, I start to feel the other way. And, and that's the right that we retain on this show. Is to change yes, our mind. That's the beauty of 
the show uh-huh. yes on a dime and one week we can hate someone and the next week they're our best friend and we'll have them on the show and we will compliment them and love yes. them which is why we don't like to have them on the show because they were afraid <laughs> of them um can we get into the reason for the season yeah which is denise are you team denise that's what i want to know off the top guys i am okay team wait denise. okay you're team denise. i'm team denise. okay i'm team brandy what Oh, Casey, what is wrong with you? Guys, uh, I don't know. And I'm getting texts from friends that are like, I believe Denise and I believe Denise. But like, are we saying, do we believe that Denise, that Lisa Rinna fucked Brandy? Is that the the extent that we believe Denise? No, I'm not about believing or not believing. I'm team Denise because Brandy is on bullshit. Like, you're so, I don't want anyone to know that I'm a cheater. You dug up this storyline to get your thirsty ass back on TV. And why are you shaming this woman for having a bisexual love affair? There's like, agree with all of that. Team Brandy for me, it's not that I like Brandy or I think her motives aren't completely fucked, but I think what she is saying happened. It, yeah, it did happen. Okay, that's no, what that, I meant okay, by okay, team okay. No, no, absolutely. Yes. But I'm not team okay, Brandy for what Okay, she, okay. I'm, I'm team Brandy of like, oh, I no. she's lying. No, she's not lying. She's not lying. But what she's okay, doing okay. is fucked now up. Now we're getting there. Because okay. she's trying to drag 100% this woman. 100% awful. Trying to drag it's this awful. woman through the mud. She done been in court all damn years dealing with Charlie with kids Sheen. and It's awful. And just like, and then, you know, Denise gonna look the girl dead in the face and tell a bold-faced lie. I'm like, Denise, you ain't fooling nobody. <laughs> and and I got to say, in Denise's acting, I think, you know, it comes and it goes. And it it it, it went. <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> I thought she goes when she goes, what, what? Oh, wait, she said something that completely was a dead giveaway to me when she goes there. there, there there's no truth to it <laughs> before they had said what it was. She knew right away. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then she tried to maintain you her guys. cool for a while. And then the tears started coming mm. as if the gravity sunk in. I know. And I felt badly when she was crying. Yeah. I'm not a monster, guys. And I think she's a sweet person. So I, here is who I say is the real enemy here. There's the real bad oh, person. I think I know. I know, too. I know, too. Let's say it on three. Okay. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Come on. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> We all said three different people. <laughs> Who did you say? <laughs> Who did you say, Danielle? I said Aaron. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. Say? Uh, Who did you I say? I said Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I said <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Cause I think Kyle is behind all of this because she fucking doesn't like Denise. She's jealous of Denise and she wants to drag her through the mud. Call okay, it, what, that's the same reason I said Kim. What's the word I she called her? I just feel like Kim was egging this on yes. a lot, too. What's the word she called her? This Scallywag? Uh, what is she called? Uh, oh, so, um, yeah, like, ragamuffin. ragamuffin. <laughs> Scallywag. Yeah. I, I agree the Richard sisters are up to no good in the same way they were that one time when they hid Brandy's crutches. Yes. Like, those two can yes. get really mean together. And I'm also very disturbed that Kim found Kyle having sex and took a blanket off her, but that's... That is... Day. Awful and told her mother, that is what this is all it's about. Just Kim creepy. Is awful. Creepy. creepy. I just think Kim, Terrible. and I do also think Kim has a very sweet, sweet, like childlike side to her, yes. but I do think Kim and Brandy are fucking pissed they're off the show. They're pissed the way they're per- portrayed, and they were cooking up nonsense for a while. Yes. And then mm-hmm. once this was found, it was like, bring Brandy in from the car. No, let her come in. Like, I, I think. Don't let her sit like a dog in the car. Do you <laughs> think that Kyle knew when they told her? It didn't look like she it knew. It didn't look know. like she knew. And I'm like, there's no way she's that good of an actress. But it seems like she would have known. I think she knew. And yet you're still blaming Kyle, Sasha. Knew. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. No one needs to back up <laughs> any, well, talk- any opinions here. Don't feel pressure for that. Because you know that they're saying that there's like... Why I think it's Aaron. Because they're saying there's discrepancy in the order of the way things were filmed. Have you guys heard about... Like, yeah. Oh, so yeah. That's People what- are saying, by Kyle's bangs... <laughs> As someone with bangs, like, you're at a different place when they're short, when they're long. You know, like, people can tell where you're at based on your bangs. Go and on. can I also say that I think Aaron is the true bad guy here because after – I think Aaron is very controlling, as we've seen. We didn't see this last year, but we've seen this this year. And I think after last year, we had easy breezy, talk about a Dixie forever, uh, Denise. And I think Aaron didn't like what he was saying. 
And I, I don't think Eric- Charlie liked what he was seeing either. I think there's yeah. something like lawyers, like you don't fucking act like this as the mom of our kid. Even though Charlie's acted so bad, I could still see his people coming down and being like, this is oh, unacceptable. Sure. And I think Denise caught wind of what she said and, and felt bad and thought to herself, I'm coming back next season and I'm cleaning up my act. Mm-hmm. Yes. Though that thing that happened with Brandy happened before the season. So she was just like, oh, I'm just having, like, because she's still Denise. Denise married Charlie Sheen. She is who she mm-hmm. is. Like, she's wild, crazy, have fun. It's great. Do you. Be you. She's I love you. She's a wild you. thing. <laughs> she's a wild thing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm For sure. Yeah. But, that, so now she's trying to clean up her image for the sake of these men who are controlling her. I'm going on a real feminist rant today. But she... And so that's why she's so scared and upset about this getting out. It's because of them. She doesn't Did care. She's fine Aaron who she is. No. No. I don't think so. Not. What do you think, Casey? But I think she's still her. I don't think so. I don't think you know. Do you think they had an open marriage? Yes. I think they have an arrangement. And she doesn't want people to know that either. I, I think, think. they're uh, Because when she was like, I am a very married woman. woman, it felt like a little much. I just don't But like I felt bad for her. I don't want you guys to think I don't feel bad for her. I mean, the whole situation no, we is do. wild. Yeah. I just don't appreciate the shaming of it all. It's like they're shaming her for having like an unconventional marriage and possibly being bisexual. I don't like that. God, no. But we're in the same situation we've been talking about earlier. It's just the lying about it. That's yeah, the drama. The it's not even the shaming. It's like, who cares? You know? And yeah. also when Is you it a poor choice of partner? Show. Yes. Yeah. Brand. yeah. It's not the greatest choice. No. Well, she made bad choices. That was to think you're going to get secrecy with Brandy is that was stepping into a fire and thinking you're not going to catch on fire. But I will no one tagged Brandy in this. I'm genuinely scared of her. Like she is someone. (laughs) No, and this is why I feel for Denise. Like Brandy will really try to take someone down, and I think in a really, really nasty way. Yeah, and that's what she's doing. So I have total sympathy for Denise. I think I I don't think she knew what she was getting into with Brandy. No, and now she's like it's becoming clearer and clearer. What I do want from Denise, though, is I really feel if Denise owned this, the the floods of sympathy would open, and like. It, we would get to another place with Denise. If, if she literally was just like, you guys, this is what happened. She's trying to kind of like emotionally blackmail me. I can't even, t- I feel like everyone would be so. absolutely. But she can't own it because of Aaron. Mm. Mm. That's why, because it's about him. It's not about her. She has no shame, but he has shamed her. So the only shame she Maybe feels. Maybe Aaron needs to him. get out some of his little electro <laughs> probes. <or laughs> his, his 5G. Yeah, his 5G and his 7G. Guys, Aaron, Aaron is oh. a, a dumb bully. Oh, he probably is threatened to crush her hand if she doesn't lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> God, sorry, I'm only laughing because that is very it's, aesthetic. Oh my god, it Horrible. did sort of make me laugh when if rapid subject change when we were in Fendi and Denise was trying on like the same black combat boots that she was oh. wearing currently. I got to say, Denise needs to step up the wardrobe. You cannot come to Italy and it be in a boot. But who looks more beautiful with their hair and makeup at the table? And she did it herself. Of course. she's. But I just need some more choices. I just need fashion choices. That's a a different bottom. Yes, somewhere. And she knows. Somewhere in the middle. We're not not looking for Dorit or Erica Jane. We're not going to get that. Just somewhere, you know, just step it up one level. Just one. Right. And I think Sutton looks horrible. Woo! Woo! Sutton is always dressed in like a baby doll, like Annabelle baby doll dress. Like it's so unflattering and How so old is Sutton? Twenty two, seventy two, unclear. I, I just like I don't. I'm not trying to body shame, but I don't understand her figure. Like, how does all of your fat go just only to one place, and then your arms and legs are like sticks? Like, how does that happen? How? Bit of a. She's a mystery wrapped in a riddle in cash. Yeah, and everybody is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Everybody is beautiful. But I just have never seen it to that extreme besides SpongeBob SquarePants. Right. You're just trying to understand the physics. I'm trying to it. understand it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So y'all got y'all got nothing? I mean, it's a Humpty Dumpty body. You know, it is. <laughs> but I... Yeah, you know, I mean... There's a there's some bodies on the shows I've had to always I've had trouble making sense of you know and and there's someone on 90 Day Fiance that I'm confounded by their body but 90 Day Fiance bodies are bodies are here there and everywhere here and there everywhere I implore everyone and again not trying to body shame but 
it's a man, so I feel more comfortable doing this since women have been body shamed for centuries. But if everyone could please watch Happily Ever After, 90 Day Fiance with Colt. Colty is now in Brazil and he is wearing a Speedo. Speedo. That Speedo was a shock. A Speedo on the beach. (laughs) God bless him, you know. He is a full-breasted man. (laughs) He He has a... And he said, do as the Brazilians do. And he, he, and he does I, as the Brazilians do. He has what my doctor calls dense breasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He has a heavier bosom. Oh, Colty, man. <laughs> Colty. You know, okay, Larissa is someone who is also, I think, very, like, black, rotten at the core. Oh, she's rotten. Oh, her. look who doesn't agree. <laughs> look whose cute I little like, face oh, looks shocked. Oh, my God, like Sasha. Larissa. We were so what? aligned early on. I like her. Why? I just feel like she just got in a tough situation. Like, she kind of liked this guy. She's like, I'll get with him. I'll come to get America, get a green card. And then he got her fucking arrested three times. And she's like, well, what the fuck am I going to do now? She just trying to find a way to stay in America. And she ended up with this dude with his crazy ass mama and all his cats. What? Okay, Sasha. <laughs> you think Colty is the reason why Larissa was arrested? Yes. Why did he have to call the cops on her three times? Because I think she was like, like I feel like she was probably what I picture is her taking like pots and pans and like throwing the cats at his head um, and like throwing cats at Debbie's head. Did you not see how Debbie behaved in that car when they got to Brazil? How she lost it? That's the side of Debbie that we have not seen. I will admit, I'm seeing a different side of Debbie. She lost it. She's like, I need to go to bed right now. If in five minutes you're gonna have to take me to the emergency room, she got so pissed that she didn't get to take a nap. Yeah, but I do get tired from long travel. Girl. Okay. I Look, feel like that's the side of Debbie that she was dealing with all the can time. Can I just say when Colty was with, um, what's her name? Jess? The new one? The new Brazilian yeah, girl. So. And yes, he, yes, he brought Deb after dating this woman for one month. He brought Deb to Brazil to meet her family. And Deb is upset because they've like named their kids and they keep trying to basically like have sex in front of her. And, and, and <laughs> it's not great, but this woman, Jess is a nut. I think she's a nut. But Colty, it's like Colty wants a Brazilian woman. I think we know that now. <laughs> and I did cry at the restaurant. Let me just say I cried when Colt, when she was like, your mom, you're a baby man. And like your mom does everything for you. And when he was like, when you lose a parent, you want to really take care of the other parent. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I was like, ah! no, no. Yes. Yeah. Those things are all true, but Larissa is bad. Colty is bad. Debbie is bad. They're all all I didn't think Debbie was as bad as she was. I will say. I thought Debbie was a bit better. I didn't realize it until that episode. And when Debbie calls the girl that Colt, like, has a friendship with that Jess isn't, she's, Debbie's bad. Okay. Debbie's bad. And so I (laughs) definitely think that that had a lot to do with why Larissa got arrested. Okay. Because of Debbie's getting in between. And but Larissa is, un- is, is an she's unstable. unstable. She is. She is. <laughs> Why? I don't want to mom shame Larissa either, but I do find it a little like, what's going on there? How? She's, okay, she, she, no one she, wants to answer She's that. gone to America to try to make a better life and she's going to bring them over later. It's very common. A lot of people do that. A lot of immigrants do that. They go make a better life. Okay. Of course, Sasha. But I think, you know, her dad is w- w- wiring her 50 grand a month. Like That is a shame. Yeah. I just mean, I think she comes from means in Brazil. And I, I begrudge no one coming over here and trying to have a better life and-, and leaving kids behind whatsoever. There's just something there that's a bit off to me. Like, I think Larissa wants to be like, there's a fame element that's, oh, that's yeah. really oh, driving yeah. all this. But it really made me sad when Eriki was talking like badly about her and she goes, in the same way, like, I rush to food. That's my, like, kind of addiction. And, like, when I'm down. And then she's like, I need to change my face or my lips. It was so sad. Look, yeah. Look. There's no sadder show on the air than 90 oh Day Fiance. And I stand by uh, that. Love After Lockup. Okay. <laughs> I did not watch that one. <laughs> Can I Is just- there anything else? I love when Denise keeps yelling, bravo, 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 yes. bravo, fucking bravo. 
and they better. And that's how I it. feel about us not being invited to things. Bravo, bravo, bravo fucking bravo, bravo. Fucking bravo. And I will also say, I love the behind the scenes. I love when they're like, the producers better cut this. Mm-hmm. Like, I love, I love when, when they're when like, get, get me Chris. <laughs> like, or whoever they're, they're like, we don't know these people yeah. that are so involved with them. They're like, it's Dan or I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> I think that should be the future of the housewives. Just break down the fourth wall. Just go ahead and tear it down. Mimi does it. I, I love, love when Mimi does it. Love like, it. I lo- those are the moments I'm searching for. I love You're it. right, Mimi. Sasha. What if we just see an episode from start to finish of like, Okay, we're rolling. Let's get set up. Where the fuck is she? She's still getting her makeup. I would love Why it. Why does Kyle give a fuck about if they bring glam? Because she's a judge. She doesn't want, she's, a, she's similar to uh, Ramona. She doesn't want anyone to look better than her. And because they brought glam, you know, she these didn't. things are changing over time because we've now been with them for so long. And wow, she, she wants right. to be the head OG because Vanderpump is gone. So she's like, well, I'm supposed to be in charge. I should look the most fabulous. I'm going to spend the most money in Rome. How dare you come with glam and I didn't? Guys, I'm sorry. Like, she's spending $8,000 at Fendi. Get your glam squad. That's no what, one's saying yeah. you can't. Or you're also in Rome. You can get an amazing makeup right. artist beforehand and book them, and it won't be as expensive to bring them over. You can get someone I fantastic. love that we're getting in the weeds about, like, how she could get someone. <laughs> it's like, but, but I can get she does curious. her makeup very well, and she <laughs> might not. But what does she begrudge the other girls for bringing us looks that I want to feast my eyes Thank upon? you. Thank, speaking of looks. I want to see those little pearls oh, yeah. on Dirty's uh, head. Oh, I loved I loved it. I don't want to see that. Loved I don't want to see that. Don't get me started on the edge of the I baby hairs. It. The appropriation. I know. I, I, I I, I, I hear you. I will give you a okay. history lesson on baby hairs. Please do. Please do. I just thought it was pearls on no, her No, the head. baby like, hairs. Please. Have you seen the Kardashians, how they do that? Where they do squiggle of the course. baby hairs? And I know you the know, baby you hairs. Know Casey. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. We won't go down that road. But can I, yes. speaking of style, what did you guys think of Erica Jane's look with the white hat and the turtleneck? That, that was upsetting. It was like a neck brace. <laughs> I thought it was like Carmen San Diego. <laughs> I really liked Erica's high bouffant later that, that night. That was beautiful. I thought she looked mm-hmm. really pretty. I thought she looked you know, pretty. I love Erica's body. If I could have her body, I love that she's like, and I fucking hate when people describe someone as like curvy or full figured as some like way to like, but I'm being so genuine when I say like her body to me is so like voluptuous. I love it. Gorgeous. I love it. Gorgeous. I love it. Gorgeous. She's. Her face is flawless. She's I've beautiful. never seen. She looks like an angel sometimes. She's like, huh? Because her skin is fair. Her eyes are blue. She's got like. I just want more from her. I know. She's giving me everything else. She's got the money, the glam. She's on Broadway. She's got her book. She's got her shoe dazzle. But she's not bringing anything actually in the scene. She's just giving us looks and combs, cold stole stares. And Dorit's not really jumping in there as much as I'd like either. Mm-mm. Okay, last thing because we got to get going. But it did really. When Dorit was saying, like, they, the, the drinks they should all order, and she was, like, very upset. She's like, we're in Aroma. You have to order a, a gin and tonic. I was like, is a gin and tonic a tonic? It just felt funny. She's like, obviously, uh, a gin and tonic. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and they breathe them out the sliders with the flags on them. I know. I would have been so pissed if my first night in Rome and they're bringing me out sliders with American flags. I would have been like, you take this shit back and bring me spaghetti, whatever it is. Thank you. Pretend it's Italian. <laughs> this is bullshit. I was angry for them. Truly. Sasha, any last thoughts? We've gotten so much oh, out man. of today. Yeah, I, I, I just want to see more of the fourth wall being torn down. I really get a thrill out of that. Yeah, so I'm too. looking forward to seeing... In the same way, like that show, The Comeback, where we see Jane, uh, Laura Silverman's character, like holding the camera and following Lisa Cujo. It's like, why can't we see that? Yeah. They end up kind of fading in the background, but you could like flick your eyes over to them and just like see. Uh huh. See what we're getting. Um, I just feel like if Denise is not going to fucking bring us into this and like tell us what happened or get there, I'm going to be pissed. I know. I'm just so I'm already bummed out because of, you know, they're saying that she delivered a cease and desist at the reunion. So I'm like, okay, well... You can't do that on this show. Well, this I need a show. split fucking screen the way we three are on Zoom right now and I can only see the three of us. And I want it to be Denise, Brandy, Andy. That's it. That's all I need. Yeah. That's it. I don't want... I don't need to see one other. Just show me the reunion special the same way he sat down with Kim and Kyle. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about the rest of the season. Just knowing that in the back of my mind that Denise isn't going to talk about it. I'm just like, well, why am I watching? Yeah, like, w- what about us? Thank you. What about us? Thank I you. want Bravo to get some firmer things in place at the top, which is just like, if you're not willing to share, like, 
that's fine, but don't you may not join the show. Yeah. You think she's going to be on next season? Because I said she did a three year contract. I don't think she will. Not if she's getting cease and desist. You can't do yeah. that. You can't pull yeah. that. You take it away. You you sign on to a show. Totally. And if it comes out, it comes out. It's great if it doesn't come out in a revenge way. Right. It sucks, but it is. Someone found out. So now you're accountable. You have to be held accountable. I say let Denise go. Let uh, Teddy go. And bring on Garcelle and some of her friends. So Eddie Murphy's yes. ex-wife. Yes. Bring those girls on. Yes. Danielle has been calling for this. Danielle's been calling for Garcelle's friends. That's what I Bring them on. That one scene they did felt so org. I-, I was like, thank you. I was for friends. It was amazing. They were really friends. Yes. But Danielle's been saying, that's the show we want to follow is her and her friends. Mm-hmm. And if you want to throw a Kyle in there, great. But, like, I'm okay to see Eddie Murphy's wife. Yes. Any day. Yeah. Any day. Any day. All right. Uh, Sasha, Sasha, Marfa, you have been amazing. Ah, you guys are so much amazing. fun. Amazing. <laughs> Tell us where we can find you. Just give us the whole the breakdown, if you will. Yes. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram at the Bravo Breakdown. I put up one breakdown a week. Right now, I'm covering Potomac. So I'll be putting up one Potomac breakdown a week. But I'm also covering Roni and Beverly Hills on my Patreon. So my Patreon is patreon.com slash the Bravo Breakdown. And for $5 a month, you get one exclusive bonus breakdown every week that you won't get on my IGTV. I mean, that's like a quarter a day. I love it. Right? Actually, I don't know. You know I don't know Danielle, but... <laughs> yeah, maybe a little less. <laughs> we don't know math. Yeah. Um, that I can't love be that. You're so math. funny. You, know you have wonderful observations that, as Danielle said, you're really seeing them. And you're really... You're getting at motivations. You're getting at emotional truths. Well, you know... And, they, and you seem to be appreciated by Bravo in a way. <laughs> I've yet to... Yeah, and that's... Well, you guys, I have no sympathy for you guys because you don't have an Instagram for your damn podcast. So create an Instagram that's active (laughs) and then maybe we can talk. Sasha, (laughs) you know, Sasha. Lots of truth. Lots of Where is the lie? Where is the lie? Where is the lie? Where is the lie? (laughs) We belong on the lower level with Lou. Uh, where is the lie? You're the best. Sasha, Thank you for joining us. Yeah, where is the lie? That is a TV <laughs> that will That is your t-shirt for the Bravo breakdown. We won't take it from okay. you. Honestly, that's your t-shirt. Oh, I thought we were going to like where go is- in on. That. Okay. No, I'm <laughs> oh, kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming on. This was wonderful and we hope we have you back. Thank you for having me. I love you guys so much. Goodbye. Love you. Thank Bye. you.